Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Workshop Quick Takes. Thank you for joining us again today. We're looking at a complete spring upgrade on my 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ. Oh, you're gonna lift it? No, actually we're keeping it basically OE, except here's the catch. It came with the base model springs. It's a Cherokee Sport without any of the suspension upgrades. There were heavy duty uh, trailer towing, I don't know, outdoor adventure, whatever they called them, packages that did come with about two inches of lift. No other changes required to the factory driveline and so forth. That's what I'm gonna change it to. The springs in the rear are kind of sagged anyway, so it's a good time to do it. I know some other hardware's worn out, but I'm not gonna go for like three, four, five inches of lift or whatever. I can do all the work you're gonna see today using about $700 worth of parts. You start getting into anything else, and then you're not just lifting it, you're also doing more extensive suspension upgrades, you're doing steering upgrades, you're doing driveline upgrades, and then of course a much larger wheel and tire package, and I really don't ever wanna go above 31s, I think, at this point. And that's just money, 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 and I got children that need to eat. So, you know, if I put all that into the Jeep, I'd immediately have to sell it in order to pay off the credit card bills. So all the work you're gonna see today is going to be OE equivalent maintenance, but we'll get a nice little benefit of getting it about two inches higher and no more sag in the rear end. And hopefully that settles down the ride a little bit as well. So come along, let's see what it takes. Today I'm plotting a leaf spring swap on my 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ. My hunch is, is that it's sagged a little bit, just looking at the condition of the springs under there. So I've got another pair. They have a slightly more free arch than the uh, stock ones and are also a heavy duty that would have been associated with the trailer towing package, which should be useful if I load up my hitch basket. So my first step is just to get an idea if that really is the case. And let's just check the floor for level. Pretty good. I don't think you could do much better than that. Now I'm gonna take the level and just follow the drip rail across the back of the vehicle and see how it looks. Well, a consistent theme the farther I go back along there is that it is starting to sag a little bit towards the rear end. Some people actually do that on purpose. So that they get more uh, approach clearance on their vehicle, but in my case, I want it more or less level. So these springs, according to some reviews online, will probably bring it maybe two inches up from its current sagged position. So the next thing I'm gonna to do to check my before and after clearances is I'm going to use this uh, trim line here as kind of a reference point. And just to bring it out a little more clearly, I'm gonna put up this tape and then take measurements. All right, using my tape measure and a marker, let's just find out where away from the floor we are approximately. I wanna say around 37 and a quarter. So I'm gonna write that on there. And then over here on the front, same check. It's around 37, although this little flare does actually descend towards the front, so that doesn't really mean anything in terms of whether it's level. But that gives me my before measurements. So the next step is gonna be to start with the rear leaf springs. I need to get the wheel off, and I also need to get the weight off the axle. Okay, what I've done here is I have raised the body of the Jeep and then placed uh, jack stands under the body frame rails. So those are holding the weight of the body. I've then found the bottom out of the uh, axle hanging on the spring and then lifted it up just slightly. So hopefully I've got it to almost zero tension and the axle is now supported with a jack stand of its own. My next step is that I'm gonna have to remove these four bolts to get rid of the U-bolts there. I don't know exactly how much tension is on this, so I'm gonna have to start these off slowly, and if it pulls up really hard on them, then I'll need to tie down the uh, sway bar there somehow. Now, there's also kind of an alignment pin right there in the middle of the shackle assembly, which is supposed to help find center on the axle. That is this guy right there on the replacement spring.
The tension on the sway bar turned out not to be a problem. All right, now that I've got the uh, U-bolt shackle plate off, well, first of all, to keep in mind that all of this half of the axle is being supported by the jack stand now. And of course, I've also left the jack uh, lightly tensioned underneath the differential just as backup, but this right here is now holding all the way to this axle, which is substantial, so I don't want to be trying to monkey with that at all or push it around. Next step, I'm gonna try and take out the uh, spring shackle end uh, bolt there and get that off. And then last of all, I will pull out the main eye over here. And once I do that, the entire weight of this spring will only be sitting on top of here and can easily fall off one direction or the other, including into things such as my emergency brake cable. So I want to be careful of that once I get to this step here. Seize bolts are a fact of life when doing suspension work. Smart Money says buy replacements before you start the job, including extra nuts, bolts, and whatever else you might need to get it done. In particular, we're going to have no choice but to cut that bolt we're currently working on because the trailer hitch gets in the way. It will not slide all the way out. So we'll cut it off, bring it back out this way, and then install the replacement this direction. But for now, I've already put some PB Blaster on them, so let's give it a shot and see what we can do. The spring had more sproing than originally anticipated. It took a bit of adjusting to free the eyes from the mounts. Quick look says the bushing eyes line up. The spring has extra free arch as indicated by the supplier, so we should be good to go. At this point, it became evident that even though the old spring had come out without removing the shock absorber, the new spring wasn't gonna go in so cleanly. So disconnect the bolts and that was out of the way. Here we're applying copper anti-seize compound just in case this bolt ever needs to come back out. At this step, only tighten gently. Final torquing should be done after returning the suspension to ride height. Otherwise, there's a risk of preloading the bushings and that might lead to faster wear out later. Lining up the bushing eyes will be a bit of a trial and error exercise because the shackle wants to move the spring back and forth even while you're trying to move it up and down. Anti-seize compound also helps prevent galling and cross-threading when installing bolts. That's critical for this front eye because we're installing the bolt into a hidden weld nut. Here we're reinstalling the shock absorber and using more anti-seize.
The U-bolts and shackle plate then reassemble over the alignment nub in the same order that they came out. Now, I neglected to buy replacement U-bolts, which is highly recommended, but since mine only had light surface rust and this vehicle has never even been used for towing, they're probably okay. The main thing is to make sure that both U-bolts have a similar amount of thread coming out of the nuts once they are fully torqued and secured. And once again, we're using anti-seize compound. Finally, raise the axle back up near standard ride height and torque the leaf spring bushings to spec. Okay, well, there it is, one side done. With the benefit of experience, the other one should go a little bit quicker, but just to double check, we have four bolts retorqued there and I added a pair of jam nuts on the rear U just in case. Bolt and the nut retorqued back there, those are freshly replaced. Bolt torque there, also freshly replaced. And then two upper and one lower bolts to mount this shock absorber, also done. Before going to the other side though, we'll go ahead and remount the wheel, drop it, and just out of curiosity, see where our measurement comes up on the side of the wheel arch there. Now, if you just watched that and thought that looked a little bit too easy, you were right. It turned out the properly seized bolts were located over on the passenger side. The initial process is identical, other than the exhaust being somewhat in the way. All the same bolts have to be removed, and the U-bolts and shackle plate came off without much protest. Then we turned our attention toward the rear sway shackle bolt. And that one turned out to be bonded very tightly with the inner eye. We tried levers. We tried hammers. We then tried bigger hammers, application of heat, more PV blaster, and finally the reciprocating saw. The saw did slowly go through, but what we ended up having to do was bend out the shackle away from the eye slightly and then saw through the entire seized assembly of the inner eye and the bolt together. And that of course was hardened steel and not at all pleasant. It finally came out and then the front one turned out to be more of the same. But thankfully, since there's no way to access the rear weld nut on that, it did finally come out with a lot of PV blaster and a lot of torque. Well, coming full circle, here we are. It's, uh, it was the end of a long day and I was starting to babble, so I'll talk over myself here. The long and short is the Jeep had been leaning back slightly and now it was leaning forward. So, still needed to do something about the front springs, but that was a job for another day. And then over here, still the same thing. Well, it's now been almost a month since I did the rear leaf springs and they've been on around town, across the city and on a one wheeling trip. So I think they're pretty well settled in at this point, but they're still holding right around two inches. So I need to go ahead and do the front, something about the front. And of course, what I was previously looking at was these spacers. Uh, these are polyurethane, you just install them above the, uh, on the spring perch above the spring and then it just adds that distance. But after looking at the situation a little more, I realized it's not that difficult or expensive to just put in the coil springs that belong in the front. So this is a heavy duty coil spring that it's matched to the uh, rear leaf springs. And so it should give roughly about the same two inch lift as well as helping with towing capacity. And then the other thing I picked up which should help with the ride a bit on the front end are these isolators. So these rubber isolators will go up on the spring perch and hopefully just help take some of the bang out of the spring 
All right, next step to get this going is I'm gonna have to uh, loosen the wheel studs and then jack the car up by the axle and then set the jack stands under the axle in order to start removing the four bolts on each side that need to come loose in order for me to drop the axle and remove the springs. Good rule of thumb is to always put your uh, tire underneath the frame rail somewhere after you pull it off. That way, worst case scenario, if the whole thing drops somehow, at least it'll stop on something. And I need to leave just a little room right here because I will be putting the jack stands under the frame rails right there after I get the axle disconnected. Okay, next up there are four bolts I have to remove under here in order to complete this assembly. And I gotta decide which four because one of them is the sway bar in-link. I have a choice. I can either disconnect that up here on both sides or here on both sides. Uh, I might have to use two tools because that bolt will start to turn, but I think it'll be easier overall because then I can just pull it off the bushing there. Second item after that is two bolts here for the shock mount. That should be fairly straightforward. And the fourth is the spring retainer bolt right back there. So. That bolt has to come off in order for the spring to lift off of the perch. After that, we should be good to go. And this, yeah, I think we still have the OE spring damper right there, the rubber spring damper. So I'll actually be replacing that, I think. So we're in pretty good shape, but let's see how these bolts play out. Okay, I think I've worked out my bolt sizes. This here, the largest I've got is a T50 Torx, and it's slightly loose in there, so that might be a T55. I'm going to give it a shot. Hopefully the bolt will hold while I turn the nut back here, the nut. It might be English, but I think I can get it off with an 18 mil. Um, these three here will come off with a 13 millimeter and hopefully won't put up too much of a fight. If you're going after a bolt that hasn't been disturbed in a while, it never hurts to hit it with just a little shot of penetrating oil. Okay, let's see if we can turn that. Lefty Lucy. Ooh. I can just turn that and it's disturbingly easy and I think it's because this here bushing is about shot. Before putting this all together, I may end up going to the auto parts store after all. Yeah, look at that, it just came right off. However, I may now need to tap that with a hammer to back the bolt out. Yeah, the bolt in there is really rusty. Looks like the only option might be to loosen the top one there. Okay, it looks like this one up here will turn with a 17 and I do need a bit of a deep socket just to clear that bolt. Another 13. Okay, I'll do the exact same thing over here on the passenger side. Okay, I've now got all the bolts uh, disconnected that would attach the axle to the uh, top of the body. There's currently only thing attaching it to the body now is the four links. And that means this next step is actually extremely dangerous if it's done carelessly, because what I need to do now is lift the axle up again under the differential, move the jack stands under the frame, and then very carefully and slowly lower the axle until the springs are loose. At this stage, if anything is done carelessly, the, uh, either the axle could be popped down away from the vehicle, destabilize everything, and then bring the whole front end crashing down, or the uh, whole vehicle might just drop. Got to move forward, so let's give it a shot. Now I very, very slowly start lowering the front axle. It needs to stay on the jack at all times. This step doesn't have to be hard, but if you get in a hurry, it can become very, very expensive. Yeah. 
And that's why we do it slowly. Wow. Look at what happened there. The jack stand, instead of coming up under the frame reel, started to come up under these bolts. And as a result, they started to bend, then it popped out and dropped the jack stand. So thankfully, I wasn't in a hurry, or I would have dropped this whole side of the vehicle down on the tire. Okay, I'm not sure if this is smart or incredibly dumb, but what I ended up having to do is just get a little bit more travel. Let's put my emergency bottle jack in there and just stretch things down a little bit farther. And finally, I was able to release the spring. So now it's time to get this old spring perch out, pad out of here and then put in the replacement and put in the replacement spring. So let's see what we can do. Now that the axle's dropped, it's gonna be the same thing on both sides. Remove the old spring, replace the upper rubber isolator, install the new spring, reinstall the spring retention clip, the lower bolts for the shock absorber, and reconnect the sway bar end link. This is also a good time to replace the rubber bump stops if you happen to order those as well. Okay, now that the springs and the damper, the rubber damper pads are back in place, in order to safely reassemble all of this, I want to first transfer the weight from the frame rails back to the front axle. And now, I think it's a trip to the auto parts store. I need to get that front sway bar in line, so off I go. It's gonna get a little squirrely. I need to be able to push this bar up somehow in order to get that in there. Hey everybody, thanks for coming along today on that little adventure. Hopefully maybe you picked up a tip or trick or two, or at least just found it interesting to see how that kind of work is done. Uh, again, this is obviously doable by any weekend mechanic. I'm not a professional, and some of my methods may not be professional either, so mimic at your own risk. However, it is doable, and that's the important point. Take your vehicle, customize it, and then, as we showed at the end, get outside and use it, because that's kind of the point. Thanks, see you again next time. Has anyone seen my phone?